Okay, for the third segment of the lecture, let's um, move on to some examples. Uh, the page where it gives the directions for how to um, do scientific notation uh, is, um, let's see, is this page here. And um, you can look at the directions as they're laid out here in the math packet, and they may make more sense to you than mine do. And if that's the case, then that's fine. Go ahead and use these directions. That, that's no problem. Uh, you'll end up in the same place every time uh, as a result anyway. Uh, but if my directions make more sense, then use mine. So you've seen uh, basically two different methods, and you can choose because uh, really all that really matters is how you end up. On the, on the back side, or the next page, actually, we've got some examples. And um, these examples uh, are uh, examples of going from a decimal form to scientific notation. The first one is 39,000 in scientific notation. And the second one is 0 0.0000974. And the third one is 0 0.00450. And la the last one is 752,000. OK, um, in converting to scientific notation, you're also trying um, to reflect the number of significant figures that's in the original number. So the, the uh, scientific notation should have the same number of significant figures as the original number did. So first we might want to figure out how many significant figures these numbers have. In 39,000, the three and the nine definitely count, but notice there's no decimal point. So those zeros at the end actually don't count. So this number only has two significant figures. <clears throat> the decimal point, which is implied, which is why I'm putting it in parentheses, is at the end of the number but it wasn't actually written in, so that's why we say that this only has two significant figures. In order to get this number to be between one and 10, we have to move the decimal point to the left, one, two, three, four spaces. That gives us 3.9. That is definitely a number between one and 10. And that'll be times 10 raised to the number of spaces that we move the decimal point which is four, and we move the decimal point in the direction that makes the number smaller, so we have to use a positive exponent to compensate for that change. So 3.9 times 10 to the fourth would be the correct scientific notation for 39,000 with no decimal point. Okay, feel free to pause the video and try it yourself. That's really the best way to learn this. Um, try it yourself. Uh, in fact, try all of these yourself, and then start up the video again and see you know, what I did with them. So um, the next number, obviously the nine and the seven and the four count as significant figures, but what about the zeros at the beginning? What did I say about zeros at the beginning of a number? Remember, they never count as significant figures. So that has three significant figures. So that's gonna be 9.74 times something. The decimal point starts out way over here on the left, and in order to get the number to be between one and 10, we have to move the decimal once, twice, three times, four times, five times to the right. In moving the decimal point, we made the number bigger. 9.74 is definitely way bigger than 0 0.00000974. And so we have to make the exponent negative to compensate. So this is 9.74 times 10 to the minus 5. Also, remember, big numbers have positive exponents. Small numbers have negative exponents. Here's another small number, so you'd expect this to have a negative exponent also. Let's first check significant figures. Remember, zeros at the beginning of a number don't count. The 4 and the 5 obviously count zero at the end of a number. Remember, zero at the end of a number counts if there's a decimal point anywhere in the number, which there is. It's way back here. 
So that zero at the end counts. So that's three significant figures. That means uh, we have to move the decimal point one, two, three spaces to get a number that's between one and 10. That leaves us with 4.50, which is between one and 10. And we multiply that by 10 to the power of the number of spaces we move the decimal point, which is three. But we, in moving the decimal point, we made the number bigger. So that has to be negative three to compensate. And then we have 752,000. This does not have a decimal point. So the 752 count, but the zeros at the end of the number don't count because again, there's no decimal point. In changing this number to scientific notation though, you do have to write the decimal point in, even though it wasn't there originally, that's why I'm putting it in parentheses. And you have to move the decimal point to the left, one, two, three, four, five spaces before you end up with a number that's between one and 10. That's 7.52 times 10 raised to the one, two, three, four, five power. And moving the decimal point made the number smaller. So this is positive five in order to compensate. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, after that, Part B has some more directions for changing numbers from scientific notation to the decimal form, but we are already went over that, so I'm not going to go over those in detail. You can look at the, the rules again in the math handout and decide whether they make sense to you, and if they do, you can go ahead and use them. And if not, then um, use mine, but you have to use one or the other. Sorry. Anyway, uh, there are some examples here. The first one is... 5.2 times 10 to the fourth. The second is 7.3 times 10 to the one. The third one is 1 1.4 times 10 to the second. And the fourth is 8.35 times 10 to the fifth. And we want to put all of those in decimal form. Okay, so um, why don't you pause the video and give them a try, and then you can start it up again and we'll see what I got. Okay, ready? Uh, 5.2 times 10 to the four means if the decimal point starts out here and moves four spaces in the direction that makes the number bigger because it's positive four, it's gonna be one, two, three, four. It's gonna end up there and you fill in the empty spaces with zeros. In other words, that's 52,000. And you don't put a decimal point in it because that would increase the number of significant figures. The original number only had two significant figures, obviously. This, without a decimal point, has two significant figures, and you don't want to change that. Okay, 7.3 times 10 to the one. Well, all that means is you have to move the decimal point one place in the direction that makes the number bigger, which would be to the right. So 7.3 times 10 to the first power is just 73. Uh, number three is 1.4 times 10 to the second. Okay, for that number, you move the decimal point twice in the direction that, move, that makes the number bigger. That leaves you with an empty space, so you fill it in with a um, zero, but you don't actually write the decimal point in to the answer. Because the original number only had two significant figures, you want your answer to have two significant figures also. So it's 140 without a decimal point. For 8.35 times 10 to the fifth, you have to move the decimal point five places in the direction that makes the number bigger. So there's one, two, three, four, five. So the decimal point ends up there. We end up with some empty spaces. So you have to fill those in with zeros. And remember though, to maintain the proper number of significant figures, you don't actually want to write 
the decimal point in your final answer. So it's eight three five zero zero zero. No decimal because eight hundred thirty-five thousand with no decimal point has three significant figures. The zeros at the end don't count if there's no decimal, and the original number also had three significant figures. So there we are, and there you go. For negative powers of 10, you do much the same thing, except in the opposite direction. The example given is 3.95 times 10 to the minus 3. What this means is you move the decimal point three spaces in the direction that makes the number smaller, which is to the left. So one, two, three. Decimal point ends up there. You have to fill in the empty spaces with zeros. So it's 0 0.00395. And that is the same number in, as the decimal form. <clears throat> okay, we can look at a couple more examples. Um, let me see if, um, yeah, okay. There are some other examples here where we have five, a number five is 7.45 times 10 to the minus two. Six is 4.9 times 10 to the minus six. And seven is 3.94 times 10 to the minus four. Okay, so for 7.45 times 10 to the minus 2, you just move the decimal point two spaces in the direction that makes the number smaller, which is to the left, and you end up with 0 0.0745. 4.9 times 10 to the minus 6, for that you have to take the decimal point and move it six spaces to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you fill in all those spaces with zeros. So it's point five zeros four nine. For the last one, three point nine four times ten to the minus four, you move the decimal point four spaces in the direction that makes the number smaller. And that gives you 0 0.000394. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. <clears throat> uh, part C is engineering notation. And since we're here actually to study chemistry and physics, not engineering, I'm going to leave that section out. So we can skip the section on engineering notation. That uh, takes up the rest of this page and the whole next page. And the page after that is scientific notation and metric prefixes. So this page will be the next one we work on right after we go over the metric prefixes. Okay, yeah, there are metric prefixes on this page. So um, actually the last part is more scientific not uh, notation than that. Well, anyway, we have to go over the uh, metric prefixes at some point. Um, so the common metric prefixes are what we can go over now. The metric system is a measurement system that was originally designed in France about 200 years ago. And it was uh, designed to be a rational uh, system of measurement where things were all related to each other uh, conveniently by factors of 10. And um, they really thought about how they devised the measurements so that a lot of things ended up being uh, related to each other in very convenient ways. Uh, there are various uh, units that you can use in the metric system. 
actually chemistry and physics Uh, chemistry and physics use what's known as the SI system. <clears throat> that, um, that means, uh, actually it stands for the French phrase for international system, uh, only in French they put the adjectives after the noun, so it ends up as SI rather than IS. And um, the SI system is just a subset of the metric system that has certain official units that are used for certain types of measurement. And that's because if you use those units in certain equations, you will get out the standard unit for whatever you're trying to calculate. If you use the wrong units in the equation, then you don't get the standard uh, units for whatever you're trying to calculate. <clears throat> we don't necessarily have to use the SI units when we do measurements, even within the metric system, because the magnitude of um, the SI unit might be inconvenient for doing a measurement. Like, for instance, uh, hypothetically, if the SI unit for um, measuring lengths were feet and you had to measure something like uh, the length of this pen, you probably wouldn't really want to do that in feet because it's not very big. You'd want to use inches. Well, you could use inches, but if you then wanted to use that measurement in an equation, you'd have to change it to feet. And so we'll do a lot of work with uh, unit conversions uh, that's a way that you can do a, un a measurement in a unit that's convenient and then just change it to what it needs to be uh, in or when you do, um, make a measurement or when you use it in the equation. There are certain standard units <clears throat> for certain types of measurement. And the standard unit for length is the meter whose symbol is lowercase m. The standard unit for mass is the kilogram, which is just lowercase k, lowercase g. Oops, <laughs> I didn't write it out. That's kilogram. OK, length, mass, volume. In the SI system, volume is considered to be the product of length times width times height. So actually, the standard unit for volume is cubic meters. Because length times width times height, those would all be measured in meters. So uh, meters times meters times meters gives you cubic meters. So that's the standard unit for volume. Very often, though, we will actually make measurements of volume in units like milliliters. Uh, and then we'll convert it into cubic meters, and we can do that. And time, the standard unit of time is seconds. And in this case, actually, seconds in the metric system is the same as the seconds that we use in our English system. So that makes things convenient. In the metric system, we use prefixes in order to modify the size of a unit. In the English system, if you want to modify the size of a unit and use a bigger unit or a smaller unit, you have to use an entirely different unit. So instead of inches, you have to use feet. And inches are related to feet by factors of 12, which um, is you know, re easy to remember because we, most of us have grown up in the United States, if not all of us. And um, it, you know, we learned that from childhood, so we remember it. But doing calculations in your head, manipulating numbers in your head <clears throat> using factors of 12 is not an easy thing to do. So, um, but that's what you have to do in the English system. In the metric system, everything is related by factors of 10. And when you're manipulating numbers by factors of 10, that's actually equivalent to just moving the decimal point around. And that is easy to do in your head. 
uh, at least you know once you're used to it. Uh, you know, dealing with uh, factors in the English system in your head is never easy, no matter how uh, accustomed to it you are. So uh, some of the common metric prefixes. would be as follows. <clears throat> Going from the top to the bottom, you know, large values to uh, the bottom values. Uh, we're gonna give the name of the prefix. And so as a prefix, you would just stick this prefix on to the beginning of the name of the unit in the metric system and it would have the effect of changing the value by the factor that I will list under value. So the biggest uh, prefix that we really need to be concerned with would be giga. <clears throat> a giga has a value of 10 to the ninth, which is a billion of something. So a gigameter is a billion meters. And the symbol is capital G followed by the symbol for whatever the base unit is. So like a gigameter would be capital G, lowercase m. The next one that we need to be concerned about is mega. Mega is 10 to the sixth or one million of a unit. So a megameter is a million meters. And the symbol is capital M followed by the symbol for the uh, base unit. Kilo is the next one we're concerned about. And the value of kilo is 1,000 or 10 to the third power. And the symbol for kilo is just a lowercase k followed by the symbol for the base unit. And those are really the only prefixes with a greater value than one that we really need to be concerned with. I'm drawing a line through here to correspond to the location of the base unit whose value would be just one. So the base unit, like for instance, uh, for units of length would be a meter, and a meter would have a value of one meter, of course. <clears throat> now everything below this line will have a value of less than one. Okay, so we have, the first one we need to be concerned with is centi. which is 10 to the minus two or 0 0.01. And that is lowercase c uh, followed by the symbol for the base unit. So a centimeter is 10 to the minus two meters or 0 0.01 meter or one one hundredth of a meter. Milli is the next one. That has a value of 10 to the minus three or 0 0.001 or one one thousandth of a unit. The symbol for that is lowercase m. The next one that we need to be concerned with is micro. The value of micro is 10 to the minus 6 or 1 millionth. And the symbol for micro looks like a u with a tail on the front of it, but that's actually the Greek letter mu. They call it mu, and it's actually their version of a lowercase m. Uh, actually, if you draw it like this, you can kind of see how it became an M when the Romans stole it, like they did so much uh, of Greek culture. Uh, so anyway, that is the symbol for micro. The next one down that we're concerned with is nano. That's 10 to the minus 9, which is 1 billionth of a unit. And the symbol is lowercase n. The next one down that we would be concerned with is pico. That's 10 to the minus 12 or one trillionth of a unit. The symbol for that is just a lowercase p. And uh, that's really the lowest one that we're really gonna be concerned about. There are several below that because, you know, in the world of science, we just can't help ourselves. We keep improving things and our abilities to measure tiny uh, little things and it gets better and better as time goes on. And so we keep having to come up with metric prefixes for, um, you know, uh, for uh, fractions that are smaller and smaller and smaller. 
Uh, but uh, I, in this class, I don't think we'll use anything below Pico. So that, that will have to do. And so these are the common prefixes. And uh, I will give you this list on any, for any uh, tests and quizzes, or actually now that we're doing this online, the tests and quizzes are all take home anyway, so I guess you can look them up. But anyway, these are the ones you should be concerned with, even though there are several others of larger and smaller values. Okay, those are the metric prefixes. And now that we know those, we can go on to the um, page that's marked scientific notation and metric prefixes. But uh, actually, I see that we're uh, nearing the end here. So I'm going to actually end this segment of the lecture. And actually, we're doing pretty well on time. So I'm thinking that this lecture is only going to have three segments to it. Uh, so we, uh, you know, we're, we're making a lot of progress and I don't want to move too fast. So uh, we can take a break here and we'll convene with the next lecture, the third lecture, uh, tomorrow. So I'll see you then.